morning, Fresh Future. It's Miss Jana, and I love to see you all. As usual, I'm super excited to see you, and I missed you guys. So, how are you doing? Put in the comments. It'll be really cool if you wrote emojis about how you're feeling. That'd be really cool. And if I was an emoji, I'd be like, the emoji with the star eyes, like, ah, that's how I feel right now. Like, oh my God. Yes, that's me. <laughs> but anyways, I'm super excited because today's lesson is really, really great. What we're gonna be talking about today is some things possibly about food, possibly about snacks, possibly about things you like to eat. But before we get into that, let's first share the broadcast, for sure, this to all the friends and the family and the few classmates, and then let's like, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And then also our church is having a campaign for a thousand subscribers on the on the actual church YouTube, Fresh Start TV. So subscribe to both, please, if you haven't done so already. All right, take a few minutes to do that. Let's review our expectations for love stands for? Love others. Love others. O. Open your hearts, ears, and minds. Open all the things, just be open, be open. V. Right. Visualize yourself in the lesson and scripture. Visualize, could that be me? Am I that person? Mm -hmm. And E, I can't do that, but we tried. E, E, E. e. Oh. <laughs> e. And E. Engage in what's happening. So engage. So when I ask questions or Minister Tiffany or someone else in the comments saying, hey, what'd you think about that? answer like and I don't know it's okay too because we're here to learn we're here to learn all together it's a safe place that's our expectation for today before we get into praise and worship let's begin to pray so father we thank you for this moment we thank you that your presence is here already we thank you that we are excited to learn more about you allow us to open our hearts and our minds and ready to receive you in a whole new way so God, we thank you for your presence and for your holy spirit abiding in us and we thank you that this moment in time with you we're going to actually use this to share with the world and make more disciples as we are your disciples all ready amen Okay, before we jump into our next segment, I have a question. Just one question, I like questions. Have you ever thought about why music is so important to God? Like, why do we use that to worship? Why do we use songs and music as a form of worship? We worship with our entire lives, so it's just not through song, but music specifically is important. Why? Because it provides repetition. Okay, so have you ever thought of a song or you've seen a commercial and it was like, yo, that's so catchy. I can't get out of my head. And you sing it all day. And your mom or your dad was like, stop singing this song. You're like, I can't because it's so catchy. Yeah, God uses repetition. So in the comments, write repetition. I'm gonna spell it. R-E-P-E-T-I-T-I-O-N. Okay, so write that the right way. Okay. <laughs> so God uses repetition. Why? Because we're singing songs based on scripture, truly get in our hearts and our minds. So for example, when I was little, I would like to rehearse Disney songs. You know, it wasn't really good, but whatever, I like Disney songs. But as I grew older, the songs I used to sing in church, as I sang when I got older, in hard circumstances, I would remember them. And in hard situations or life, whatever, I would remember those songs. And those songs would actually um, help me to remember that God is great and that no matter what I'm in, he is greater than the situation. So I would sing songs like, our God is greater, our God is stronger, Lord, you are higher than any other. Yeah, I would sing something like that. And the Holy Spirit will remind me that, wait a minute, God is greater than whatever I'm in. So before we start dancing and jumping and singing the songs that we love, I wanna to listen to the words because the words matter. And you may not think right now, but when you're older, you may need these words because they get into your heart and your soul. And in situations, you can remember those songs and remember that God is greater.
John 4, 14 says, but whosoever drinks the water that I give will never be thirsty again. The water I give will become a spring of water flowing inside of them. It will give him eternal life. Eternal, eternal, meaning forever, forever and ever and ever. Mm -hmm. And then John 6 and 35 says, then Jesus said, I am the bread that gives you life. He who comes to me will never be hungry. He, he who believes in me will never be thirsty. So who remembers the name of our new series that we're in? Can you write in the comments for me? That's right. So if you wrote um, that blah, 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 blah. So if you wrote in the comments, fit for the kingdom, you're correct. We are learning about how to be fit for the kingdom. And last week, Minister Tiffany taught a really great lesson on training day, how we train ourselves to be disciples for Jesus Christ. So sometimes we think that getting fit is only about our outer appearance. So how about how strong you are, how many muscles you are, or you muscles you are, what? How many muscles you have. It's not about that only. It's also about what you eat. So being fit means also have eating the right foods. So today's lesson, as I said, is about food and we're gonna call it the meal plan. How many people would classify themselves as a foodie? Like you're that person like, oh my God, I see this new food, this new type of like dish on, S on Instagram or on Facebook, I gotta have it, mommy take me there. That is me, I am a foodie, I want all the foods, that's me. I am like you, we are, we are family. <laughs> if it's like you, write in the comments, me, in all caps. But no matter how many times I eat my favorite foods, which is pizza, or drink my favorite milkshakes, or beverages, or whatever, I will still in a few hours be hungry. Now that's annoying, but it's the truth. I'll still be hungry, I'll still the next day wake up like, wait, is there any more? Be sad, refrigerated, because there's no more. That's how our natural foods are. But today's lesson, meal plan, we're learning about the bread of life. In John 4 and 6, Jesus is telling the people that he is the bread of life and the living water. All who drink and eat of him will never want again. Jesus is using some really strong words here, like never thirst again, never be hungry again. Those are really definite words. And he's using that to really paint a picture to people who are hungry. And they're like, wait, what? I can never hunger again? How? <laughs> I'm gonna show you in a few short minutes. Watch this video. The crowds earnestly looked for Jesus and finally found him on the other side of the Sea of Capernaum. Just the day before, Jesus had miraculously fed all of them with only a couple loaves of bread and some fish. And while it had satisfied them at the time, they returned to him hungry. But this is why they sought Jesus so desperately, not for who he was, but because he had amazed them at what he had done. The miracle reminded them of the days of Moses, when the nation of Israel was nourished daily with bread from heaven. Perhaps Jesus, like Moses, could usher in a new age for their people. Jesus spoke to the crowd, you worked so hard to find me, but only so you could ask me for bread that satisfies a short while. Why aren't you looking for the bread that will satisfy you forever? Bread that satisfies forever? Many in the crowd began to wonder how they could get this miraculous bread from God. They asked Jesus, what works of God must we do in order to get this bread? Jesus replied, I am sent from God, believe in me. But the crowd searched for a sign and questioned Jesus. Yes, you multiplied bread and fed thousands, but Moses brought down bread from heaven and fed millions. What great work will you do that will demonstrate that you are greater than Moses? Jesus said, you must hear me and understand this. Moses did not give you the manna. My father gave it to you. And now he has sent to you the bread of life that I speak of. The expressions on the faces that looked back at him were mixed, some skeptical, some hopeful, and others simply eager to hear as they said, please give us this bread always. The crowd waited intently for his answer. 
Then Jesus announced, I am that bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst again. He spoke of his body as bread and his blood as wine. The suggestion of sacrifice disturbed and confused numbers of people who would not receive his words. In fact, many who had been following Jesus walked away from him on that very day. Jesus turned to the apostles and asked, Will you leave me as well? Peter spoke up for the others. Lord, where else would we go? You alone have the words of eternal life. Okay, so here's some backstory about the scene you just watched. Jesus just fed 5,000 people with five loaves of bread and two fish. And as we all know, we need to eat daily. Every day we need to eat or some of us will get really hangry. So there's Jesus off to himself and there's this huge hangry crowd coming towards him. Like, hey Jesus, you just fed us. Can you feed us again? Like you fed us yesterday, remember us? Can you do it again? And Jesus asking them like, you're seeking bread. You're looking so hard for bread when I'm the bread of life. And you're looking for this bread that can only suffice for one day when I have the bread that can feed you for eternity. And so they're like, wait a minute eternity i can have you can give me bread that lasts forever where <laughs> where's this bread at jesus said if you want this everlasting bread you have to come to me and believe and some walked away because the cost was too great because believing in god and believing in jesus meant we had to let go of some things letting go of the idea that moses was the best thing ever letting go that maybe that the same person who sent um jesus allowed Moses to rain bread from heaven. They had to let go of their old perspectives, let go of the old things, and they weren't ready to do that. So that was a small recap of what just happened. Just a little tiny, tiny, tiny recap. Now, I'm sure you're wondering, Miss Yana, how does all this have to do with Jesus being the bread of life? How can bread last forever? How can one man supply the needs of everybody on earth? I got you, I got you. These are all great questions. At the end of the video, the disciples said to Jesus, you alone have the words to eternal life. The food Jesus gives us is spiritual. And just as we, and just as we have food to feed our natural bodies, we have to have food to feed our spirit as well. Because if we don't eat, we die. The same way we don't eat our spiritual food, our spirit man will start to die and decay. The truth is we have to eat daily of both. We have to. Although Jesus was one man, he wasn't just any man. He was fully God and fully man. So he could supply all the needs of every single person on this earth and no one goes depleted. You know the song we sing? We can all drink at the same time. Dun -dun 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 -dun. That's true. We can all drink, all eat, all be filled with all that God gives us and, and, and have more and more running over. And no one feels, wait a minute, no, what about me? It's not like that. Your siblings and the body of Christ can eat with you and no one is depleted. So I'm sure you're asking, how do we do this? By reading his word. His word is the bread that we eat. <laughs> That's how we do it. By spending time with our father, by worshiping, by praying, by spending time with the one that we say we love. How can we say we love him but don't spend time with him? That's like your mom, your dad saying, I love you and I wanna spend time with you but never are with you. Does make any sense, no does it? Jesus was trying to convey a message to the crowd by being the bread of life. He's saying, I fed you yesterday and now you are filled. But then now the next day you want more. I can fill you for eternity. He was using a beautiful example to how he can feed them forever. Jesus wasn't trying to replace our natural need for food. He made us, he knows what we need, our natural bodies need. But he's saying additional to what you need naturally, I'm what you need spiritually. So I wanna give you an example of what you need because you can't just survive off bread there's a scripture in Matthew 4 and 4. Man can live, can live on bread alone. That's what he was saying to the, to the crowd. So Jesus also talks about fasting. And I'm sure you're like, wait, Miss Yana, you were just talking about this whole bit about meal plan, being a foodie, and then saying how much you love food, but why would you sustain from something you love? Exactly. My natural flesh loves it. And I think about scripture, what he always, Jesus often talks about was denying yourself. 
And sometimes you can love something so much with your flesh and your in your body that sometimes it takes your your spirit man off of what's important. So what God was talking about, he was saying, this is how you discipline your spirit man to be focused on me, having a, a really a laser focus on God. So as we're growing in God, be mindful to not neglect spending time with him. Because as you're spending time with him, you are drawing strength from your everlasting wealth. You're drawing strength from the bread that, that is more than enough for every single person that you know and the more. So keep growing in God and drawing from him and spending time with him. And that's how we eat from his his word of life. That's how we drink from his well. So put a hashtag foodie for Jesus. I'm corny. I don't care. Put a hashtag foodie for Jesus if you are someone that after this live or after this Facebook broadcast, you're going to go and want to actually learn from God and actually say, God, I want to eat of your daily bread today. I want to drink of your well today. I want to do that with you because I know I'm growing. I was like this high and now I'm this high or this high and now I'm this high. Now that I'm growing in you naturally, I want to grow with you spiritually. Let's do it together. Okay. Let's go. All right, so we talked about spiritual growth, but also you know you can grow crookedly. Okay, so you ever seen a plant? Like if you don't like stick, if you look at your grandmother's house or your mom has plants, they have to, when it's growing, they have to put them behind so it can grow properly. That's like us. And they have to give it good water. They have to give it good foods. That's like us. So for us to grow properly, we have to intake the good things. So I'm sure your mom says, eat those vegetables or eat those things that are healthy for you and you're like, I don't want it, but I wanna eat candy. And they're like, you have to be really careful of how you, what you intake, the same way that happens in the spirit. So if you never read your Bible and you're wondering why, I always feel sad and I never know what who God really is to me. Am I really his daughter? Am I really his kid? Does he really love me? You have to open your Bible and read what, his, what he's saying to you, really intake what he's saying because there's one truth and those people, um, that you're maybe that you're around you're, and you're telling them, no, God is the way and Jesus loves you. And they can't believe it probably because what they're intaking is affecting their minds, is affecting their heart, affecting how they've been treating everybody else. So the same way that we were saying that worship by repetition matters, what they're reciting to themselves, what they're saying to themselves, what they're hearing around them, TV and music and what, the, what they're listening to is affecting what they believe in. So what you're ingesting, and what you're receiving can't be junk food. So let's write hashtag no junk food. Mm -mm. Nope, nope, there's a balance and we have to be mindful of what we're taking. So let's be clear. I'm not saying that you have to only eat spiritual food or only eat the good things or only eat certain things. No, the father understands that there's a balance, but what he is saying is that just be mindful of what you're intaking because it does affect you. All right, guys, I have questions for you all. I need to make sure you're paying attention. So, question number one. How many people did Jesus feed? Did he feed 12? Because, you know, there is 12 people around him somehow, maybe. And then there was maybe 3 million. Did he feed 3 million? Maybe. Can he do that? Did he do that? <laughs> or C, 5,000. <laughs> Answer is C, he fed 5,000. Question number two, we can eat the bread of life by reading God's word and spending time with him in worship and in prayer. True or false? Why did some people leave and not want the bread of life that Jesus was offering? 
Is it A, they didn't want to sacrifice? B, they weren't really hungry? Yeah, I'll eat you later. C, they were sleeping. They were sleeping, nothing. Which is it? <laughs> song did we sing during praise and worship? If you don't want to ask you that, but I want to know. Do you remember the song that we were singing? Or if you don't remember the name of the song, write maybe the chorus or the lyric you remember. Okay? Yes. Time, time for key takeaways. So key takeaway number one, Jesus is the greatest meal plan. We can receive everything from Jesus. He can feed 5,000, 10,000, millions, and no one leaves hungry or thirsty. Key takeaway number two, Jesus is worth the sacrifice. Some people who were hungry actually wanted the food that he was gonna provide, the bread of life, left because they didn't wanna sacrifice what they knew for Jesus' words, but they didn't know that he was worth it. What you're sacrificing is worth it. Fasting is worth it because whatever Jesus is promising you is better than what you gave up. Key takeaway number three, God knows and he will provide. We don't ever have to worry about where we want to eat or drink spiritually. He is the great builder. He will build us the way that he designs. So whatever our future is, he will build us and he will keep us healthy and strong. That's his promise. In this entire time that we've been together, I've been with Jesus about a thousand times. I've said his name so many times. So if you're someone that's saying, hi, my name is, insert your name, and I want to know more about the Jesus that you're talking about. I want to receive salvation for myself. I want to share in this beautiful um, family that you are talking about. I want to receive the bread of life. I don't want to walk away. I count the cause. I'm saying, I get it. It's a lot, but his promise is better for my life and for my family's life. If that's you, all you have to do is say, Jesus, I believe in you and I want to confess with my mouth according to Romans 10 and 9 and believe that you are Lord. And that's it. You are part of this beautiful family and we love you and we welcome you. So if that was you, we're all cheering in heaven because, wait, what? We're not cheering in heaven. <laughs> 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 so if that's you, we are all happy and the angels are rejoicing in heaven just like we're rejoicing on this side in New York. We're so excited that you are part of our family. So if that's you, you can write in the comments or just write us and contact us at, write this down, Fresh Future at, at sign, thefreshstartny.org. We would love to hear from you and just connect with you because we love you already. Fresh Future, let's pray. I am a king's kid. I am called by God to do good works. The word guides me and Holy Spirit teaches me. I will love God's people. I will be a disciple. I will make disciples. I will do your will. Send me, I'll go. In Jesus name we pray, amen. So we're so excited that you were here with us today. But before you go, we have a small request. Can you please subscribe to Fresh Future, Fresh Start TV? And if you missed last week, it's okay. It's a grace, it's a grace. You can watch the video right there. We'll see you next week. Bye. What? <laughs>